सिद्धांत टाइमर शेयर करू हो सर हो सर everybody i am rahul chobe from sanchiti hospital and tjo tv for today's live webinar on rehabilitation and current trends in total knee replacement today we have speaker with us dr khyati shah and panelist as knee specialist dr parag sanchiti with us i hand over this session to dr siddhant and request him to introduce our speaker and the panelist over to you dr siddhant yes thank you so much mr chobe Good afternoon, everyone. It's soaring 31 degrees Celsius outside, and it's an ideal condition to talk about an equally hot topic for the day, that is rehabilitation and current trends in total knee replacement. For this, we have our esteemed panelist, Dr. Parag Sancheti, sir. It is an honor to introduce you. Uh, it is an honor to introduce you, sir. Dr. Parag Sancheti, sir, an orthopedic surgeon and chairman of Sancheti Group of Hospitals. is a specialized arthroscopy and joint replacement surgeon so has a keen interest in knee surgery and sports medicine and research dean of the pg college of sancheti institute for orthopedics and rehabilitation he is also a founder uh, a founding member of indian society of hip and knee surgeons he is on board of international society of arthroscopy knee surgery and orthopedic sports medicine of usa a renowned knee surgeon performing approximately 800 replacements every year and 500 arthroscopic surgeries sir has over 50 publications as well he has been recipient of prestigious awards like rashtra seva puraskar award of excellence by governor of maharashtra and midcon achievers award 
so it's an honor to have you as a panelist and welcome for the uh, session sir thank you thank you dr siddham thank you for the invitation thank you a speaker for the day dr khyati shah is a knee therapist working in the uh, inpatient department at the sancheti hospital pune dr khyati has completed her undergraduation from deccan education society college of physiotherapy pune and has completed her post graduation from ma rangunwala college of physiotherapy in pune with keen interest areas of manual therapy taping neurodynamics and mckinsey dr khyati is an ideal uh, match up or an ideal therapist for a complete approach to the patient it's a pleasure to have you dr khyati for our uh, today's session thank you sir uh it's a it's a request for you you can start sharing your uh, screen and we can start the presentation right away yeah thank you everyone uh, i thank all the panelists for uh, joining the uh, session and all the viewers for joining in the discussion and we sharing the screen for the further elaboration of uh, total knee replacement is is it visible the presentation yes, yes dr khyati you can start yeah so i'll be uh, talking about total knee replacement rehabilitation and advances and the current trends uh, so as we all know uh, total knee replacement is a very successful surgery which is done for uh, osteoarthritic knees or any arthritic condition where the patient is suffering for a long time Uh, and having disability in uh, disability in walking and having painful knees it has a very successful outcome with advanced rehabilitation techniques this is not a bed rest operation and the patient is made to uh, amputate and do all the functional activities since day one so as we all know it will prevent the hazards of bed rest assist with functional range of motion and also strengthen the knee musculature that is all the patients want uh, for uh, functional activities as we all uh, have seen that the normal joint space is required uh, for uh, for pa uh, for patients to function normally like uh, have good range of motion good strength excessive friction that is as we can see in the ppt where there is erosion and uh, excessive friction due to bones rubbing uh, it gives patient pain and uh, disability in walking which hampers all their daily activities so the best option for this is uh, to go for a total knee replacement so the goals of total knee arthroplasty as i have mentioned that it prevents the hazards of bed rest it uh, gives functional range strengthens the knee muscles and achieves functional independence so this is one aspect which we cover here in sancheti where we uh, advise the patient also for a pre operative physical therapy program which is the prehab course where uh, we give patient counseling and um, like to prepare them for the post operative uh, plan so for that we uh, give uh, we teach them transfers like bed to chair uh, using the commode uh, commode chair and also we give them uh, counseling as how to balance pain and exercises uh, together as we all know that patients post operatively always uh, have pain complaints which is quite normal but the thing which they have to learn is how to balance it with the therapy as it is not a bed rest operation and you cannot be uh, keeping the rehab on hold because of pain so that is what we have to counsel pre operatively so that they are more prepared uh, for other for the advanced rehab also we teach ambulation with assistive devices initially at the discretion of the surgeon and uh, review the precautions and home structure pre operatively because it depends on their lifestyle and it depends on the work which they uh, do so it is uh, a good idea to review their home structure their occupation and to tell them the do's and don'ts before the surgery so here uh, i'll be telling about the precautions which are given so uh, that is obviously uh, no pivoting or twisting uh, sitting cross legged like excessive rotation is uh, not allowed usually and uh, in the acute post operative period it is recommended to monitor for the signs of uh, 
infection at the incision site which includes uh, redness discoloration fever excessive uh, drainage or pus as also uh, strongly recommended not to apply any form of heat or do any aggressive massage in or around the knee area no direct weight bearing as in squatting kneeling on the knees uh, direct weight bearing on the knees and are, uh, are not allowed uh, the main uh, the main problem which uh, we have seen in post operative patients is they are uh, is the thing that they tend to keep a pillow below the knee which is uh, which is the position of comfort for them but it is strongly recommended to keep pillow under the heel and not under the knee so uh, this is uh, to prevent the fixed flexion deformities uh, which uh, they can develop if they are not counseled properly also staircase training is done for patients who have functional activities at home like if they have a staircase at home or if they have to use staircase to go to the washroom then we teach them in the inpatient uh, rehabilitation itself uh, like uh, ascending with the good leg and uh, descending with the bad leg so uh, this is a technique to uh, teach them how to use the uh, staircase only if required initially you are at sanchiti hospital we practice uh, all the activities in inpatient rehabilitation where the patient is uh, made to do uh, ambulation uh, like the patient is mobilized at day one itself also the um, also to address pain and swelling in the initial phase is very important so uh, icing and isometrics are recommended uh, on a more frequent basis so ideally every 2 to 2 hours the patient is told to do icing and which and which also helps to maintain basic strength by doing isometrics so i would like to highlight some recent advances which support the use of icing so here this is a 2020 article which shows that hand and knee icing evokes pleasant sensation in total knee replacement patients which says that icing location does make a difference so the authors have concluded that even hand icing can be an optional uh, optional treatment for patients undergoing total knee arthroplasty because it uh, works on the physio uh, uh, pain physiological mechanism and the other study uh, shows that application of ice for post operative knee incision does this make sense so uh, as we all know that icing induces vasoconstriction so uh, they have said that uh, it is uh, better to ice in and around the knee especially on the posterior aspect as compared to the incision site so these are uh, recent articles which support the use of cryotherapy also as i had mentioned earlier to prevent uh, fixed flexion deformity we advise on day one itself uh, to keep uh, the knee in passive extension that is a knee extension stretch by placing a small towel or a pillow roll under the ankle to relax the leg and promote knee extension it has to be performed several times a day like uh, keeping the pillow below the heel and doing uh, isometric squats every 2 uh, to 2 hours the patient should feel a stretch pain which has to be in balance with his normal pain because uh, the stretch sensation will help him relieve the posterior capsular tightness uh, these are the exercises which we uh, give you at sanchiti hospital uh, which includes all the activities like uh, slr knee bending supine and side lying abduction vmo activation uh, is vmo activation is a must in the early phase as it tends to go into inhibition so uh, we try to activate vmo uh, as soon as possible since day one also active quadriceps drill ambulation with assistive devices first we uh, tell the patient to use walker as it has a wide base of support as and how he progresses with his strength and uh, balance we uh, we wean the patient off the walker and then we take him on stick and then independent ambulation also we make the patient uh, under our supervision uh, confident in doing all the functional activities like using the washroom walking around staircase training and also uh, turning in bed getting in and out of the bed so that uh, and we uh, strongly recommend them to practice it every 2 3 hours as uh, i have mentioned that it is not a bed rest operation so here uh, we tell the patient to practice all these activities so within a day or two uh, they have good uh, quadriceps control of their own so this is the uh, patient's uh, 
the actual TKR patients' uh, photo where we have uh, taught them chair sitting and the patient was able to do all the activities on her uh, own before discharge. Uh, stick walking as in how the patient has strength, it depends accordingly. So uh, if not an inpatient, then uh, in outpatient rehabilitation, uh, the patient is able to walk uh, with less base of support, that is with the stick. So uh, I'll be mentioning some recent advances, but before that, I'll uh, show some videos which we have taken on the patient, uh, the inpatient rehabilitation. Uh, is it visible? Uh, no, you can uh, reshare the video. You'll have to play the video. Yeah, it's seen now. So uh, this patient uh, had achieved good uh, quadriceps strength on day two or three. So she could be able. Uh, so she was able to do uh, active quadriceps on her own. Are you able to see? Is no, the video can't. visible? No. We can see video. So uh, VMO activation, uh, this uh, lady was able to do on her own. It's just that uh, we had to give feedback for her uh, little hip flexion which was happening. But she had good control of the quadriceps. So we teach uh, turning around uh, on both sides with a pillow in between. And uh, this is a sideline SLR which we tell the patient to practice. Here she is using little trick movements. But ideally it has to be, uh, has to be done with body in one line. With some support required initially to strengthen the hip abductors. So that uh, we can prevent the waddling gait uh, which the patient had initially.
so uh, this patient had achieved good control uh, she could do active slr on her own in a in one second or third day with minimal assistance she could do all her functional activities knee bending supine one and uh, when we tell the patient to do bedside sitting uh, that automatically helps in 90 90 knee flexion so this was uh, these were the few uh, videos which were for inpatient rehabilitation i would like to highlight some recent advances uh, which says that uh, by maria by maria which was done in 2019 itself which says the effects of enhanced sensory motor rehabilitation on indices of functional performance in patients undergoing total knee replacement so uh, they have found, they have concluded that uh, adding a virtual reality or sensory motor rehab pre operatively as well as post operatively uh, along with the conventional physiotherapy has enhanced uh, effects on functional uh, exercise on functional activities like uh, chair sitting uh, stair climbing uh, sitting up and down timed up and go like walking around it has uh, shown improved uh, it has favored sensory motor training by 35% also uh, there was one article uh, of 2020 which says higher treatment effect after total knee arthroplasty is associated with higher patient satisfaction because overall the ultimate motive is uh, patient satisfaction so they have uh, said that if you uh, customize the uh, treatment or if you have a individualized uh, treatment plan uh, result which results in higher patient satisfaction and willingness to undergo surgery again so uh, that is very true as all patients uh, do not have the same pain tolerance nor do they have same strength pre or post op so uh, it is uh, it is better if we individualize the program for, uh, for them according to the need which gives them satisfaction and also uh, they can do their activities according to their uh, according to their uh, level like the capacity so uh, and there was this other uh, study which has uh, compared two different models of rehabilitation by rabab zagul of uh, in 2020 uh, which had uh, compared high intensity and low intensity rehabilitation programs along with conventional physiotherapy but uh, they have said that high intensity program had superior functional gain and patient reported outcomes compared to lower intensity program so a uh, high intensity group has a uh, long term functional gain so aggressive rehabilitation uh, is uh, supported by many studies after uh, total knee replacement surgery so uh, so a high intensity program works better for the long run also uh, a similar article of immersive virtual reality on muscle strength proprioception balance and gait It, this was a case study of a 62 year old uh, lady undergone uh, total knee replacement bilaterally for her osteoarthritic knee so the patient responded positively to rehabilitation using virtual reality and her muscle strength proprioception and balance improved drastically so uh, so it is uh, that this virtual reality should be considered and uh, should be further studied along with the conventional therapy as we all know that due to inhibition uh, uh, because of pain or because of uh, tightness in the muscle uh, there there is a high chance of uh, developing trigger points or tightness of the muscle uh, the main muscles affected are quadriceps uh, hamstring gastroscoliosis and iliotibial band so uh, this was a article of 2018 where uh, they have uh, they they had jotted down a uh, trigger point pattern so myofascial trigger point distribution pattern in patients post total knee replacement so there was significant decrease in uh, uh, motor trigger points and concluded that mfr is effective for uh, trigger point release in patients post uh, post arthroplasty so uh, if we add myofascial release along with the conventional therapy uh, it gives much better result uh, 
compared to just uh, conventional therapy. This is also a similar article. Uh, this is full immersion virtual reality, which has to be done pre-operatively as well as post-operatively and produced better early balance uh, ability and knee function than what was seen in the control group. So as they have written, it, it should be started in the initial post-operative uh, phase itself. Also increases the chances of recovering faster. So these are some recent articles that should be practiced pre and post-op itself. So uh, these are few exercises which we give in the outpatient uh, rehabilitation that is usually after 15 days post suture removal. So we start with spot marching, uh, side kicks, forward kicks. These are uh, open chain weight bearing activities which help in better balance and weight bearing control. Forward step up and step down, lateral step up, step down. Prone knee bending can be started and usually if the patient sits bedside 90-90, their uh, hamstring control and prone knee bending active 90-90 is possible. Side and retro walking for a better gait pattern. Uh, squatting for eccentric quadriceps control and uh, cycling is a good activity and many articles have supported the use of cycling post total knee rehabilitation depending on their uh, muscle function and control. Uh, I would uh, just present some uh, advances. This is a Durban protocol, uh, a new improved rehabilitation protocol for knee replacement of 2018 which says that backward walking reduces significantly the impact force upon contact, uh, foot contact pattern and kinematic pattern. So it is advantages for rehab of knee joint surgeries with better proprioception. And basically the uh, extra beneficial effect uh, which, which can be used in the uh, initial phases because backward walking uh, helps in strengthening anti-gravity muscles, quadriceps loading and stretching of the posterior capsule. So, uh, Usually this uh, started late, but we can start it earlier. Uh, the question which many patients ask is like uh, high knee flexion activities like kneeling, squatting, or if the patient has a, a lifestyle of farming or something, then they have to sit down to a much uh, deeper, uh, with a, too much deep, uh, deep flexion. So, uh, this is an article which says that patellofemoral kinematics uh, has an impact on deep knee flexion after total knee replacement, uh, which says that squatting and kneeling activities are allowed, but kneeling is a more strenuous action as it gives excessive load at the tibial tubercle, which, uh, which increases the risk of polyethylene wear in the long run. So, it is uh, suggested that overweight patient or those requiring high flexion should try to avoid kneeling to reduce the risk of polyethylene wear. Thank you. I'll be just showing the videos of outpatient rehabilitation. Is the video visible? Yes. Uh, here the uh, patient is given the feedback of not to bend the knee uh, while doing hip extension and standing. Side walking is practiced with uh, like a wide base of support and uh, 
minimal assistance of any devices like walker or stick uh, the patient is uh, doing it independently just we have to monitor whether they are not deviating from the path of progression this is for uh, weight bearing and lateral balance control the patient is has to do mini squats with the ball support uh, this is to develop good eccentric quadriceps strength So this is the uh, outpatient uh, uh, who is doing stick walking independently. So patients can develop good uh, knee ROM and uh, functional strength in hams and quads uh, in balance when uh, we recommend cycling to them, forward and reverse both. So this is a functional activity which is practiced in outpatient rehab, uh, lateral step up and step down. Similarly, we also practice forward step up and step down, which challenges the balance and also it helps in uh, lateral and forward hip control. Is this visible, the slide? Yes. Yeah, so I would like to conclude my presentation with, uh, I hope I have uh, given all the idea about the rehab part. So uh, thank you, Siddhant, and thank you, everyone on the uh, panel. Thank you so much, Dr. Kehati. It was indeed a great session listening to you, especially all the clinical aspects that you have pointed out equally with the recent advances. Uh, so we move on we move on to the current trends
so we move on to the current trends uh, in the total knee replacement so why are we discussing this if there are times of india recently said an article there are about 1.2 plus lakh surgeries that happen across the country of total knee replacement so we understand the amount of patients which are undergoing a similar kind of a surgery somewhere around the country and this is probably the best platform to discuss and to get everybody together so that we at the end of the day as a country we can have a uniformity so the first question is uh, is a prehab need of the hour so so there is a question that the rehabilitation is easier when muscles are stronger and more activated surgery is a stress to the organism and if we do not ready for the procedure the post operative outcome does not go the way we want as dr khyati also mentioned that our uh, that at our institute we have a prehabilitation protocol going on would like to know your input as well about the prehabilitation session i guess there is some technical error with uh, parak sir dr khyati i would like to have your views as well till then uh yeah so i would uh, strongly recommend uh, prehab which is a near of the hour so as i had mentioned that once the patient uh, does a uh, prehab and he then uh, gets operated he is much better prepared and he has good basic strength to continue and to uh, tolerate the pain level which is there uh, post surgery yes yes thank you so much ma'am for your views we have dr parag back with us uh, so uh, the question was prehab a need of the hour uh, sanchiti institute has uh, has always followed the recent advances that uh, are happening around the globe and we also have a prehab session going on for our patients so i would like to have your views also on it so i think uh, prehab is a relatively new concept where we start the patients on uh, rehabilitation even before the surgery i think that is a uh, very very important because what happens is that once the surgery is done the patient is in a lot of pain and when we try to teach him exercises he doesn't really appreciate those exercises because they increase the pain so if we tell them before and explain to them what are the exercises he is supposed to do after the surgery then the patients are mentally prepared we also tell them in the prehab session that what is expected what is the level of pain how long will the you know brain stay in the joint when will you be made to walk when will you be made to uh, sit when will you be discharged what are the precautions so i think with that the prehab program it's a comprehensive program not only about exercises i feel but i feel it gives a complete idea to the patient on what to expect and once you know what to expect the patients accept the pain also in a better way they know that okay the second day of the surgery immediately they have to walk third day they have to go home 14 day the stitches will come out three weeks later no walking uh, without no support walking and all those things so i think that's an important part of prehab which uh, dr khyati and the team are doing extremely well along with dr supriya and dr siddharth so i think uh, it is definitely as you have said in your tagline it is the need of the hour so just remove the question mark and just say it is the need of the hour yes 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 okay. moving on to the next question okay uh, this is a very important question right now which is going across the world that is need for an assessment model in place so there was this one uh, study which said that uh, development of international uh, classification of functioning so they said that a more precise icf categories describing the disability status of uh, specific patient types are required for clinical application so uh, so the question over here is that are we looking forward of for making an assessment model in place for a patient of uh, pre surgery also as well as post surgery yes the question is for whom 
the question for dr khyati yes, sir so it was for you it was for you the question was for you okay so i think the question again is there a need to have this model in place for uh, exact assessment pre op and post op i would say again yes because today it's all about documentation today it's all about knowing what the condition was uh, before the surgery and after the surgery so it's all about assessment and evaluation so if there is a you know kind of a tool in place or a model in place or a app in place where we can actually you know uh, assess and evaluate the patient's condition pre op as well as post op i think that will really be uh, helpful so this is again something which definitely i feel has an important role to play in the recovery of the patient because when you tell them that okay this is what we expect you to do but you are at this and it is said in facts and figures in degrees okay you have only 0 to 78 degrees movement we need this movement to be actually 0 to 95 you know and then you can really tell them and once they have those assessment tools they can also monitor their own progress so it is more uh, you know precise rather than it being you know very subjective okay i can bend up to my i can put my legs and sit by the side of the cot so this definitely i think is again a need of the hour to have proper assessment tools yes yes absolutely like as you rightly said that documentation has become the key right now that everybody is working towards and uh, it it plays a very important role for the assessment also going further so the next question is uh, operate or conserve what does your opinion is about it there was basically a study in 2016 uh, which talk about the eligibility for total knee replacement and they said that the radiographic severity the functional limitations were the confirmed drivers for a total knee replacement however pain was may or may not be a driver for a, a total knee replacement so in your uh, clear, in your uh, such a vast experience of clinical uh, expertise what was your uh, suggestion about it that's an excellent question so first let me give you a short answer we treat patients we do not treat x rays so you know that's the the basic crux but that being said many a times we do see that you know the most horrible looking x rays uh, patients are painless patient don't have much pain because if somebody gets the x ray to me and it puts it in front of me the patient is somewhere else and not come i see the x ray and i tell them yeah radiologically i do feel surgery is required but sometimes when the patient comes personally to see me and i see that the pain is not much it's not correlating with the x ray directly patient is able to walk well get down from the bed and his day to day activities are not much hampered so i think uh, ultimately it's definitely a clinical radiological decision i wouldn't say only radiology or only clinical because again the vice versa is also true the patients complain of immense pain clinically and then we feel that okay this is the patient for tkr we tell our care manager okay just get ready i'm sending your patient post him tomorrow but then we just feel okay let's take an x ray first because without an x ray you can't uh, uh, tell the patient for a knee replacement but clinically you're sure and then this is a subset of patient where the patient comes to you with the x ray and you say oh my god this is just grade 1 or grade 2 calgary lawrence uh, this doesn't merit a surgery so then what do you do now clinically it's showing definite surgery radiologically grade 1 grade 2 it doesn't merit a tkr so what is to be done so i think to answer your question it is a clinical radiological decision along with that you also have to take into consideration the mindset of the patient the patient's uh, you know uh, his ability to you know and comprehend what he is getting into whether he is he will be able to you know uh, adhere to the post op protocol he should be very clearly told what are the do's and don'ts after the surgery i can just give you one example that one of my patients from oman i forgot to tell him that he will not be able to squat down he will not be able to pray in the position of uh, you know the namaz and after the surgery when i told him that he was so angry he said no you should have told me before i wouldn't have done the surgery so i think giving them realistic expectation is also important and then you can decide whether to operate or to conserve so the answer to this in short it is a combination of clinical radiological and patient factors so i give all these three factors 
equal importance and if one of them is missing and then the puzzle doesn't get completed then it's better you don't operate that's what i would say yes 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 absolutely sir yeah absolutely sir even the recent trends say uh, the similar things that uh, we have to uh, take about the, the three points that you mentioned they are the primary drivers for uh, any replacement go further we spoke about the pre assessment we spoke about the assessment we spoke about uh, the prehab uh, we also spoke about do we have to operate or convert now the point comes in that what happens after getting operated so there was this so article which said that in 2021 february by a very recent article which said that an app based knee trainer is a promising tool in improving functional uh, outcomes such as a knee society score and was after a total knee replacement so so do you think so that are we as a country are we uh, there yet to use an app like this uh, why am i asking this question is because as i said before also in the current trends that around 1.2 lakh plus surgeries are happening across the country so do you think so a uh, app like this which uh, where we can talk about more about the indian functionalities will help the patient yeah, so i just kind of answered half of this question in the uh, second last question before this so i think definitely uh, india is ready and actually people are using apps also you know we have a goniometer kind of a app which was developed by dr ashok ram and yes. uh, you know those apps are available where you can actually document so i think uh, india is not only ready but has already started using this app there are only a couple of things which i would like to say that this app should be user friendly it's not only the doctor the orthopedic surgeon the physiotherapist who should be comfortable to use it but also the patient and more importantly the patient attendant so if they are able to use this app in a easy way without you know hassles without errors then i think that is the way to go and india is definitely ready for this app so i think it has to just be very very user friendly that's what i would say the current apps are not so user friendly yes 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 as you said and yes as as even we have a, a, a patient portal with us yes even we are looking forward um, for um, matching up with the trends going further a question for both of you uh, uh, for akshar as well as khyati ma'am uh, a supervised outpatient treatment approach is needed uh, so there was a study in 2013 which said that due to highly individualized characteristics of such type of exercises an outpatient physical therapy performed in a clinic under the supervision of a trained physical therapist may provide the best uh, outcome measures in long term so uh, i would request uh, so to go first after that we can have dr kathy no 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 ladies first all you okay yes always always i should say so we will have uh, dr thank kathy you. first uh, uh, this is uh, thank you for this question uh, this is quite uh, important like the the patient should have a supervised session initially as as you correctly said uh, how to wean off the patient or how to progress the patient that should that is very important like depending on his strength depending on on his balance and functional activity so as i had mentioned in the article earlier that if the program is individualized and customized depending on the pain and balance activities uh, which he does so uh, it gives more patient satisfaction basically and also a supervised outpatient uh, rehab is uh, very customized as not all patients uh, go for agility uh, agility or balance training for a very long run depending on their age depending on their daily activities but i i would strongly recommend that uh, like earlier as i had mentioned in the uh, in the video the first the lady was walking lateral walking with uh, normally then we can progress with weight cuff or theraband depending on how she is improving just uh, so highly recommended a uh, supervised outpatient rehab yes so we would like to have your opinion as well yes so i completely agree with uh, dr khyati you should never argue with the women so it's better to you know always agree with them so firstly let me say i agree with you and yes. uh, again very very important point outpatient treatment uh, uh, approach is more important because now is the era where you are talking about daycare knee replacement daycare hip replacement 
So what happens? The patient goes on the same day or in 24 hours. So then, when do you see him back? When do you assess the further things? When do you explain him? It's obviously on the outpatient department. So I think uh, a more supervised outpatient treatment is the need of the hour again. And because the surgery, the duration of stay has gone down and a lot of things uh, our patient needs to be explained in their uh, visits uh, after the surgery. So I think a more supervised outpatient treatment approach is definitely required. And as you will see in India also, we will start following, you know, the daycare, PKR and daycare, PHR surgeries. From 14 days of admission, we came down to eight. Right now, we are admitting the patients three days and patients are going home nearly on the fourth day. So I think outpatient treatment or supervised uh, treatment at home or through some virtual app is important and that's the approach which you have to take. Yes, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Sir. And in this pandemic times, yes, it's uh, more uh, important for a daycare procedure. Yes. Um, going further, one of the commonest complications post-surgery uh, is uh, your fixed flexion deformity. So I would like to have both the surgeon's opinion also about the fixed flexion deformity and the therapist's opinion also about the fixed flexion deformity. So I request Khyati ma'am to uh, give her opinion. So uh, this post-operatively, because of pain, uh, many a times the patient's position of comfort is to keep a pillow below the knee or uh, just to uh, rotate and flex it and keep because the capsule uh, is relieved in that position. So uh, the more pain we give them in the early stage, like when as physio we go and tell them to not to keep it below the knee and uh, it should be ideally kept below the heel. The patients, uh, it's very difficult for them, but the early we comply them with these activity. Uh, so it's uh, it's a good way to prevent the flexion deformity, which can develop eventually. So the uh, the physio pain which they get it initially is to be uh, tolerated, but it is a good uh, like to make them compliant. It is strongly recommended not to keep below uh, below the knee, uh, and also uh, due to swelling or effusion, sometimes the patient is uh, the patient uh, do the patients do keep it in flex position. So for that icing and isometrics along with posterior capsular stretching by keeping the knee passive extension is a highly recommended when the patient is in lying down posture. So uh, these are uh, and also uh, here at Sancheti sometimes we give them a uh, push knee splint or uh, long leg knee brace as night splint or we use them while walking as well. So the patient uh, keeps the knee extension while doing the extension based activity. So the weight bearing is much improved. Yes. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, so uh, you would like to have your opinion as well? Yeah. So, you know, I think uh, whenever a patient has a flexion deformity, let me first distinguish between a flexion deformity and a flexion attitude. If it is a flexion attitude, that means he's just keeping it flexed, but, you know, it will extend fully once the physiotherapist uh, you know, passively does it. If you're dealing with an flexion attitude or a flexion posture or whatever you want to call it, you're okay and you can correct. But what you're talking here is a fixed flexion deformity. So yes. deformity is something which will not correct. So then you're in a serious trouble if that is so because whatever you do, how much ever you stretch the posterior capsule, it does have a limit. But in rheumatoids, the flexion deformity can correct more easily than osteoarthritis. In osteoarthritis, what happens is that the deformity doesn't correct much. So if you're dealing with 20, 25 degrees of flexion deformity, mind you, deformity, then we are probably looking at something more than just stretching or posterior capsular stretching or physiotherapy. Then comes the role of manipulation in the running. If you need to do that, you need to do that. You take to the patient to the OR, give epidural, manipulate it, hopefully it corrects, and then you put him into a, a posterior push knee splint. If that also doesn't help, then the next thing is surgery, and you may have to go in and uh, do a poly exchange for a thinner poly, release the posterior capsule surgically, release the medial and lateral gutters, and then correct the deformity. Yeah. So I think that is the surgeon's perspective. Kathy nicely gave the 
physiotherapist perspective but then you know when the patient asks us that uh, you know how did this happen after the surgery it was quite good and it was nearly stretching fully then we say that so your physiotherapist didn't do a good job so we always blame the physiotherapist and then the physiotherapist blame the surgeon so it's always a blame game but for me i always say it is a combined responsibility so both of us are it's very easy to point a finger to somebody to point a finger four fingers are at you so remember that so whenever is a flexion deformity don't sleep on it treat it aggressively and correct it because if a patient has to walk on a flexion deformity you people know it better than me it's difficult you know definitely the effort and the energy required for gait pattern with a flexion deformity as opposed to a fully extendable knee is definitely much more in a fixed flexion deformity so you don't want to have that complication so do whatever it needs pick it up fast and be aggressive in treating the flexion deformities post operatively yes 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 as rightly said and i would just like to uh, say one thing that platforms like these are basically just helping us to bridge this gap with just so said about between the surgeon and the therapist so we are just trying to bridge this gap so that everybody is together there for the patient which we which we are uh, doing as a matter of fact i strongly agree with sir because uh, like uh, it that so the extension in the initial phase is very important so it is uh, very uh, right to be aggressive in the start itself going further uh, acquitting therapy are out yet to be explored uh, so india is pretty new at exploring this route i would say that uh, there was this article in 2015 which talked about the total knee replacement in acquitting therapy i would like to have uh, the opinions of uh, both uh, on this question as well uh, dr khyati as well as parak sir so dr khyati yeah so i uh, thank you sidan for this question so i uh, strongly believe that aquatic therapy uh, along with land based therapy together will work in a much better way compared to land based therapy alone or aquatic therapy alone so uh, as we all know that uh, because especially it is helpful for overweight patients or those who have uh, difficulty in bending uh, in rom activities they can be taken for aquatic therapy as a uh, it will offload their joints because of the buoyancy of water as also uh, due to hydrostatic pressure the swelling and pain tends to reduce to a much better level so uh, because of the offloaded uh, joints they can perform the functional activities better as also uh, there are articles supporting that range of motion pain uh, swelling and functional activities are improved to a great extent if aquatic therapy is uh, introduced along with the land based therapy which is uh, twice a week for 6 weeks so if that much also is incorporated it uh, it can give much beneficial result yes Thank you. yes absolutely again i completely agree i think aquatic therapy is important uh, but actually if you ask me between the two is pre operative when the patient is having a post your already stage 1 stage 2 or stage 3 is it more important then or more important post operatively i would say actually pre operatively you know walking in the water doing aqua therapy as a part of the definitive treatment for osteoarthritis is more important when you do a knee replacement and you do aqua therapy definitely it's good even my acl patients acl reconstruction they do aqua therapy they are very happy knee replacement patients are very happy nowadays they have You know these small pools which are created, which you can walk inside. You have a treadmill inside the pool where you can do all those things. So, aqua therapy is the way to go. I think uh, more and more different modalities of aqua therapy are uh, being promoted. And just to give a short answer, it is important, and one should consider it and try and avail of those uh, facilities in your infrastructure if you don't have it. I think it's the way to go and. i think aqua therapy is very good even for a definitive treatment of osteoarthritis and also for knee replacement yes yes as as rightly said uh, in prehab also plays a very important role so uh, so the last question is for you uh, specifically 
because it's one of the most important questions that the indian population has that is achieving high flexion necessary for satisfaction after total knee arthroplasty in indian patients for say because our functional activities include uh, a lot of high knee flexion activities and also as you said one of your patient who was from oman who wanted uh, to compare basically so across the globe as well the high knee flexion is in some cultures very very important so uh, in, what, in your clinical expertise do you uh, agree with this that uh, for a high flexion is necessary for satisfaction of the total knee replacement or uh, we can live without it as well so you know let me divide this question uh, further so definitely the short answer to this is that high flexion is necessary for a uh, better satisfaction so if the patient's knee is bending 140 degrees after the surgery versus only 90 degrees the patient whose knee is bending only 90 degrees is uh, not going to be as satisfied as the patient's knee whose which is bending 140 degrees so that's a given you know there is nothing more to that but what i want to also highlight in this is that people are talking about high flexion designs patients are asking okay can we do a, a high flex design me so i think that is more of a myth than a reality the factors which govern the post op range of motion are one patient's pre op range of motion yes yeah. if the patient's pre op range of motion is 130 the chances that he will get 130 after the surgery are quite good if the patient's pre op range of motion is only 30 40 degrees in other words it's a stiff knee even if you use a high flex implant that patient is not going to bend beyond 90 so that is something you have to understand in fact there is a paradox more the range of motion pre op you tend to lose it less the range of motion pre op you tend to gain it so that is what you have to tell the patient and high flex designs are just a marketing gimmick of course there are certain advantages where you have a chamfered poly anteriorly you have the slope you have newer metals all those things are good the patellar tracking is better the j curve is better all those things are good in a high flexion design but that alone does not give you high flexion it has to be a combination of proper patient selection good surgical technique and third most important a good rehab program post operatively so these three factors will decide your range of motion and what flexion you are getting so please definitely the answer is more flexion more the happiness you know there is no problem in that but at the same time tell your patients that there are these factors which control in it and not only the design implant design that is how i would answer your question yes 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 thank you so much sir with this we have come to end of today's session i uh, hope uh, it was an informative session we have tried to bring about the rehabilitation protocol the recent trends and the advances at the same time together as a small packet for you so that uh, we hope uh, for, for a better future always so i would like to thank uh, dr parak sir for becoming a panelist and uh, sharing with us uh, his immense knowledge of just a drop of it actually uh, of his the entire ocean of knowledge that he has about the uh, about the surgeries about the surgeon perspective and everything yes uh, i would like to thank dr khati as well for joining us uh, for the session and explaining us the protocol and the recent advances that uh, go around at our institute over here uh it was indeed an informative session dr kathy thank you so much thank you uh, and uh, last but not last uh, the least uh, our entire physio tv team uh, headed with uh, dr ashok shant sir mr rahul chawbe and dr neeraj athambe with the entire team that works behind uh, the curtains to get about and to get to you uh, this wonderful sessions and wonderful topics across uh, which are current uh, which are currently uh, trending across the globe So thank you so much, and thank you everyone who are, who are attending this session uh, amid this pandemic. We hope and we pray that we get over and we get back to our normal as soon as possible. And uh, thank you so. Uh, so, uh, do you want to add any last words? Well, thank you very much, uh, uh, Sudan, uh, for organizing this. Thank you very much, Rahul and Ashok. 
and the physio tv team for putting this together it was very good i also got to learn a lot from uh, dr kathy stock and i would just uh, want to thank and uh, request you all to continue such academic initiative you know when we are doing rounds when we are seeing patients operating we don't think of all these things which actually are equally important in improving patient outcomes so thank you for organizing it i just want to end on one note that dr kathy looks uh, more beautiful with her hair left but in the ward she always ties them if i have first time and she is like this so continue with that way. thank you bye thank bye thank you sir thank you so bye. much sir. thank you so much sir. dr kathy do you have any last words to add yeah uh, i was uh, very much uh, pleased when i got to know that i would be doing uh, this with parag sir uh, one on one so i was very keen uh, to do this session like uh, because like it is a very good platform to uh, to put for the views to put for uh, to join the discussion one on one with sir is um, is like really uh, a blessed feeling like yes yes absolutely absolutely and yes. thank you siddhant for organizing it so well like uh, thank you thank you thank you so much thank you so with this we come to an end of the session thank you so much stay safe everyone this is dr siddhant signing off thank you yeah.